Welcome to my second video on confidence intervals. In this example, we're going over a problem where we need to use a T value instead of a Z value. So before we get started, I want to explain when we need to use a T value and when we need to use a Z value. And in general, uh, we need to use a T value whenever two conditions have been met. So I'm going to write these down for you just to help you remember. So the first condition for using a T value is the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. And notice how in this example, the population standard deviation is never given to us. The only thing given to us are the scores of nine students, and we can get a sample standard deviation from this, but the population standard deviation is not given to us, so this is unknown. Um, this first condition has been met, and our second condition says the sample size is less than 30. And this condition has also been met because we have a sample size of 9. Okay, this, The test scores of 9 randomly selected students have been given to us. So both conditions have been met, um, so that's why we have to use a T value instead of a Z value. So now let's get started with this example. So here in this problem, the test scores of nine randomly selected students are given to us. And what we have to do is compute a 99% confidence interval of the true average or the true mean. So the first thing I want to do is write down the confidence interval formula that we're going to use. And this is the same formula that I used in my first confidence interval video. And I highly recommend that you watch that video also if you haven't seen that yet. Um, it says the population mean or the population average is equal to the sample mean plus or minus a sampling error. So now let's rewrite this formula using our math symbols. Uh, the population mean is usually written with the Greek letter mu. Our sample mean is going to be written with x bar and x with a bar over it. And uh, this is plus or minus the sampling error. Now, in my last video, the sample error was written with the letter Z, but I already explained to you, for this example, we need to use the letter T. So our sampling error is going to be T instead of Z, multiplied by the standard deviation, and we're going to use the standard deviation of the sample, since the population standard deviation is not given to us. So this is being multiplied by the standard deviation of the sample, which is written, which is written with the letter S, and this is all divided by the square root of the sample size n. So as you can see, this formula looks almost exactly the same as when we use the letter z. So let's plug everything into the formula. So we have our, our true mean, or our population mean, is equal to the sample mean, or the sample average. So to find the sample average, we just have to add all of these numbers together and then divide by 9. Um, I already did this, and it's equal to 73. If we add all of these test scores together and divide by 9, we get an average of 73. And this is plus or minus our t value. Um, so now we need to find the t value for a 99% confidence interval. So you need to use a t table to find this t value. So here we have a t value, and notice how I highlighted the 99% confidence interval in red. Since we're computing a 99% confidence interval, then we need to use this row that I highlighted in red. And on the left side, we have our degrees of freedom. Um, your degrees of freedom is always equal to one less than the sample size. We had a sample size of nine, so that means our degrees of freedom is equal to eight. All right, so that's why I highlighted uh, it, our degrees of freedom of 8 in green. And notice how the green row and the red row intersect at the number 3.355. So this is the t value that we need to use for our particular example, 3.355. We're computing a 99% confidence interval with 8 degrees of freedom, so that's why we have to use the t value 3.355. So let's go back to our example. So we have a t value of 
five, and this is being multiplied by the standard deviation of the sample. So if we plug all of our test scores in this sample into a calculator, we're going to get a standard deviation of 10.69. Once again, this is not a standard deviation problem, so you shouldn't have to do it by hand. So I just plugged all of these test scores into a calculator, and I found that we have a standard deviation of 10.69. And this is all being divided by the square root of the sample size, and we have a sample size of 9. So divided by the square root of 9. Alright, so now we just need to simplify this as much as possible. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit to give myself a little bit more space. So we have the population mean, or the Greek letter mu, is equal to 73 plus or minus our sampling error, which is 3.355 times 10.69 all over the square root of 9. If we plug that into a calculator, we get a sampling error of 11.95. So now if we use interval notation, our lowest value is going to be 73 minus 11.95, and our largest value is going to be 73 plus 11.95. So now we can simplify this even further. Uh, we have on the lowest end of our confidence interval, 73 minus 11.95, which is equal to 61.05. And on the high end of our confidence interval, we have 73 plus 11.95, which is equal to 84.95. So what exactly does this mean? Uh, this means that we're 99% confident because we computed a 99% confidence interval. We're 99% confident that the true average of test score is between 61.05 and 84.95. So this is our confidence interval. If you want any extra practice with confidence intervals, I have another example where we have to use a Z value. The link for that is in the box in the top left corner. I also have a video on hypothesis testing, which is just a continuation of confidence intervals. The link for that is in the top right corner. Um, I also have a probability example where we have to use binomial distribution, and I also have a practice quiz. If you want any extra practice in statistics, um, I have some interactive video practice quizzes, which are here on YouTube. So check those out if you want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in my next one.